Howdy y'all, welcome back. It's been a while since we dove into the old world power supply and the dynamo, and how its overarching and reverberating effects on the old world still impact the way society is shaped today. As such, I was shocked when I discovered the history of something known as the showman's engine or the showman's locomotive. In this video, I'm going to discuss and tie together a few ideas which may help answer some questions we have surrounding old world architecture. As always, the history here is remarkable, uncanny, and downright integral to human history. Yet, if the narrative we've been presented with is to be believed, we won't fully be satisfied with the breadcrumbs we've been given. Yet, let's try to turn these morsels into a meal. Let us now discuss the showman's secret engine, also known as the showman's dynamo or the showman's street locomotive, a portable steam-powered traction engine equipped with a fully functional dynamo. For starters, the mainstream narrative, including Wikipedia, makes little discussion of these engines as innovative or cutting edge, seemingly downplaying the importance while also lacking any significant photographs from before the year 1900. Finding images from the late 1800s proved not only to be difficult, but once I did locate the images, which I will include throughout this video in detail, I was even more intrigued. By the time that the showman's engines appear to be photographed in the late 1800s and early 1900s, when they're supposed to be brand new or nearly new, many of them appear well-aged, almost weathered in the photographs. Granted, as we dive into the history, we're told these devices, these vehicles, these dynamos, traversed entire countries decades before similar automobiles would be created. So here's the current narrative, very briefly. As the 19th century hit its midpoint, life was full of countless revolutions featuring societies around the world adapting to an industrial age, and this was usually fueled under the auspices of war. According to the current narrative, years before we had the modern petrol-powered automobiles of the early 20th century, dating back to the industrial revolutions across the earth in the mid-1800s, some of the first machines to conquer the great landscapes of our world were portable steam-powered dynamos, gigantic and cumbersome vehicles, referred to as road locomotives. As we look through the modern interpretations and recreations of these vehicles, little appear to do justice to the way that these vehicles are described in the current narrative. The showman's dynamo, or locomotive as it became known, was a large road-going craft powered by steam, which, while usually weighing multiple tons, was still able to traverse nearly any road or terrain from the mid-1800s onward. We're told these vehicles were akin to tractors of the industrial age, however the showman's dynamo became popular among showmen and architects alike. The purpose of these vehicles, we're told, were to transport a large dynamo built into the vehicle to a specific area where the dynamo could then be switched on, capable of supplying electricity on the spot to anywhere that this vehicle could travel. While the practical applications of the showman's dynamo are endless, and the traveling electric power station seems to answer a few of our questions regarding old world construction, we're also told the main use for these traveling dynamos besides use in farming and construction, was to be used by traveling showmen. More specifically, we're told showmen's engines began as elite technology used for architecture and farming, but quickly transformed into something much more lavish, taking on an entirely different role in history and in society. To grasp how important, how large and powerful these elaborate traveling dynamos really were? Consider this, every circus which had a showman's dynamo only needed one of them. The traveling dynamo was able to electrify every single light of even the largest circus. However, it's not just lights. These dynamos also provided the power, the electricity, for every single ride at their respective circuses. Meaning, you could have hundreds of lights and dozens of rides attached to one showman's dynamo and it would quite easily provide the electricity for everything. Understanding the capabilities of these mobile dynamo engines, we see that this technology, this Antiquatech, might have had other applications within the old world.
The most fascinating point to all this is understanding that besides the photographs we're looking at now, we have very little evidence about the early industrial age showman's dynamos. We have old world documents that make mention of them, but very little within these reports discuss how these machines actually function. All that information appears to come from more modern interpretations and recreations of these vehicles. Yet here lies the problem. Of the thousands of the showman's engines that were created worldwide throughout the industrial age, only around 100 of them survived into preservation. The majority of the showman's engines were put out of use by World War I and they were destroyed for parts, with the last showman's engines being produced in England into the 1930s. However, these ornate later designs are amongst the only showman's engines that survive today, with the earlier industrial age showman's dynamos of the mid 1800s being little more than a mystery. What we do know is that we have well-documented showman's engines in England from the late 1880s onward, being produced in great quantities, yet a majority of these models are also said to have been lost. It seems the wars of the world had rendered these pieces of old world technology disposable, and yet, knowing their capabilities, it's interesting to wonder what role, if any, the portable dynamo vehicle could have played in wartime. What we do know is from the surviving showman's engines, they became an extremely lavish design by the early 1900s, seemingly meant to draw the attention of every man, woman, and child the vehicle steamed past. The bright lights and artwork on all parts of the vehicle was only surpassed by the stories being told of showman's engines rolling into towns, usually at the head of the circus, with the more intricate showman's engines playing lights and music as they traveled like a modern ice cream truck announcing the arrival of something that the town had never seen before. Most of these early steam-powered road locomotives were also precursors, some would say the brothers, to modern gasoline-powered traction engines, also known as tractors. However, what makes the earlier showman's engine so elite, so unique, so different, so advanced, is that where modern gasoline tractors serve their purpose without much pizzazz, the showman's engine was all about the bells and whistles, sometimes even including bells and whistles. According to the current narrative, the standard showman's engine was late crimson red or Prussian blue with golden yellow wheels. Typically, the sideboards had the name of either the proprietor or the circus or all of the rides that the engine would be powering, written in gold or gold flake paint. While typical engines of the time had steel parts, showman's engines employed a more flamboyant, twisted metal design, usually of brass. Brass stars and other decorations were often mounted on the motion covers and water tanks as well. What makes the showman's engine the mystery that it is are the dynamos. We're told in nominal horsepower, the steam engines range from 5 to 10 horsepower, or possibly larger. The smaller 5 horsepower steam engines typically powered a standard 110 volt dynamo, while the larger steam engines at 10 horsepower or more would power a 110 volt direct current dynamo, which was known to power small roller coasters. Now here is where we get to the more revealing yet essential aspects of the showman's dynamo. We're told each one had a canopy built into it, which extended when the vehicle was in park and in use by the circus. These canopies often had electric lights built directly into them, and the canopy was often very ornate, being tied directly to the circus or the showman. However, it served a key function to keep the machinery and the operator dry and out of the conditions. Diving back into the narrative, we're told each showman's engine had an extendable chimney built directly into it. Each one of these chimneys extended so while the vehicle was moving, the chimney could be lowered to avoid hitting obstacles, but extended when the vehicle was parked to allow for the proper dispersal of exhaust. 
What makes it even more fascinating is each chimney was perfectly built to function with the other parts of the machine, fitting directly below the canopy. All of this leads very nicely to the meat and potatoes of the video, the key takeaway from the showman's engine. Again, these are basically all-purpose vehicles. Yes, they're made to be beautiful, to be ornate, to be gaudy, to take your mind away from the purpose that they serve. But these vehicles, the idea of electricity anywhere, to the point that you could power numerous machines, the showman's engine is quite possibly the same type of technology, the same type of vehicle that progressed the world through the industrial age and is responsible for a lot of the architecture that we call old world. The last aspect of the showman's engine that I haven't discussed yet, but something that's important to understanding the true purpose of this vehicle, we're told nearly every single one was built with a large boom crane. Again, we do see cranes before the late 1800s, and we see dynamos before the late 1800s, but to see a vehicle basically resembling a modern crane being on wheels with its own self-powered engine able to supply electricity, it's all very astounding. We're told showman's engines had massive cranes built into them, and this was used mainly for the construction and deconstruction of roller coasters. It was a Swiss army knife providing electricity, but beyond that, these showman's dynamos, if we consider the context where the showman's dynamo vehicle was a tool from the old world, could have been repurposed by the inheritors and that is why we're told they're for fun and games but quite possibly this could be one of the most cutting edge technologies of that time period ask yourself does your town need electricity in the mid 1800s call the showman's dynamo does your town need heavy blocks lifted into place or torn down the steam powered traveling crane of the showman's dynamo could do that for you you need lights the showman's dynamo. You want to go off the beaten path, off the treacherous roads of pre-1900? That's no worries, because the showman's dynamo was quite literally built to do that. Theories and jokes aside, removing the bells and whistles, and we still have here the precursor, or at least the distant relative, to many modern machines and vehicles. Modern technology, but technology that occurred over 150 years ago. Diving into this a little bit further, in my reading, I found that the showman's engines were most always built to government issue, meaning that these were government ordered, seemingly indicating the technology had been trickled down in one way or another. They often had road limits in place, and these machines would often exceed the road limits. The showman's engines were immensely popular, according to this narrative. They appeared in every city that the circus did, and yet, we, at least I, had never heard of these mentioned before. In the early 1930s, when steam on the roads was in a steep decline, four of the most sophisticated showman's road locomotives in history were produced in England. They incorporated the height of all the features I mentioned earlier, and we're told these four vehicles were steam's finale. The first was number 19782, known as the Lion, built in March 1932 for Anderton and Rowland. In April of that same year, number 19783, King Carnival II, was supplied to Frank McConville. The third engine, number 19989, was known as Onward, and this was built for Samuel Ingheim of Cheshire. The last of the four, and indeed the last showman's engine ever constructed, was number 20223, titled Supreme built in March of 1934. Three of these engines survived into preservation, with Supreme and King Carnival II on road haulage duties to this day, quite literally still being used nearly 100 years later. Onward was the unlucky engine, being cut up in the year 1946 due to war and budgetary complications. Today, what we have left of the showman's engines, at least for us to look at, are ones that were renovated and rebuilt. They include a faithful replica of Onward that was completed in 2016, but this means that many, if not all, of the showman's engines that we look at today 
Not only aren't the original engines that reshaped the world in the mid 1800s, these would be the later models, but even these later models are renovated and rebuilt, meaning most of the original components and the original aspects of these showman's engines no longer remain, even in the vessels that are still on the streets today. Essentially, for all of the work that the current narrative describes these showman's engines doing, we have very little in the way of direct photographs or untouched showman's engines that survived to this day. While they did shape the world, and they did shape society, and they did entertain the masses, and many of them were converted from common tractors to these devices for entertainment, we seldom have a detailed depiction of the inner workings or reports discussing their inner workings at the time of their creation. All we have to go on are the modern reports, basically backwards engineered, looking to emphasize the utilitarianism of the vehicle while firmly establishing that most, if not all of them, were used for entertainment. So that's where I believe I'll end the video. I've definitely seen something like these before. I feel like when I saw this vehicle, when I saw the showman's engine, I got deja vu. It's like I had been in contact with this machine before. They look so familiar, yet for all intents and purposes, most of us have probably never seen one of these before as only about 100 of them still exist today. One thing I do know is the showman's engine just like the many tricks and schemes of the old world showman himself, appear to have a mystery or two right below the surface, waiting, knowing we're searching for the truth, yet seemingly distracting us with all of the opulence. So the question becomes, are you distracted yet? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for being here. Cheers, y'all.